Let's talk about Norwegian wool. Hey guys, it's Diana from Paper Tiger here, and today I want to talk to you about Norwegian wool. But before we get into that, just a couple of quick where you can find me on the internet. Um, you can find my blog at paper-tiger.net. Uh, you can find me on Instagram as Cake and Vikings, or you can find me on Ravelry um, as Diana Walla. Um, I've wanted to make this video for a really long time because this is a topic that I get pretty passionate about. I lived in Norway and I love Norwegian wool. I've been interested in Norwegian knitting for a long time. Um, so I wanted to share a little bit of what I've learned about Norwegian wool with you guys. Um, and yeah, we'll see how far we get today. This is a big topic to cover in one video, so um, I expect that there's a, there's a good chance there will be follow-up videos if you have more specific questions, and I know some of you do because I got a lot of great questions on Instagram when I asked you guys what you wanted to know about Norwegian wool. So today I thought I would try and do a little bit of just a basic introduction. I'm going to cover a couple of different things. So we're going to start with sort of some general history and info about um, sheep and wool in Norway, just a little bit of background information to provide some context. Um, after that, I'm going to talk about some specific sheep breeds that you'll find in Norway that um, their wool is used for making yarn, so you might encounter them as hand knitters. Um, and then I will also talk about some of the yarn brands that you'll find when you're looking for Norwegian wool. Um, some of the big ones, some of the small ones, and also how you might be able to get them if you don't happen to live in Norway or Scandinavia where they're pretty easy to find. Um, so that's the basic breakdown of today's video. So what do I mean exactly when I say Norwegian wool? Um, I'm talking about wool that comes from sheep who've been raised in Norway. Um, and as a knitter, I'm interested in yarns that are also being milled in Norway. So it's a helnorsk product, a wholly Norwegian product. So if you're wondering why I care about Norwegian wool, there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, one is that I've just long been really interested in Norwegian knitting, traditional Norwegian knitting. As, as I got more interested in that, I started to become more interested in the sort of traditional materials you might use for that. Because you can do stranded color work with any yarn, truthfully, um, but there's a reason that the Norwegian, you know, the traditional Norwegian yarns are the way that they are. So I wanted to dig into that a little bit. Um, the other thing is that the fact is, like in many other places, Norwegian consumers have placed an increasingly um, big focus on softness in yarns and in wools. And that means that some of the Norwegian yarn companies um, shifted their focus to imported fibers. So imported wools, imported merino, alpaca, silks, um, anything like that. And there's nothing wrong with those fibers. But um, Norwegian wool production is a really important part of the economy and industry of Norway. and um, Norwegian sheep being, you know, grazing freely protects open spaces in Norway. And there's this whole system that, you know, is threatened when um, the demand goes up for things that Norway imports, and then suddenly there's fewer sheep farmers, and suddenly there's fewer sheep. And um, it's just, you know, I'm interested in preserving that cycle. I think that Norwegian wool is really important for Norway. So I'm interested in Norwegian wool because it's great to knit with, but I'm also interested in Norwegian wool because the wool industry in Norway is really important, and it's important to me, and it's important for the country, and um, I just want to keep that going. So moving on to sheep breeds, the organization Norsk Sau Ojeit, which is the Norwegian Sheep and Goat Association, lists 19 different breeds of sheep. I'm not going to talk about each and every one of them, um, but I will uh, touch on the ones that you're most likely to encounter as knitters. So sheep breeds in Norway can be broken down into three main types. You have um, the Norsk Kvitsau group, the uh, Norwegian white sheep group, which is a crossbred group. Um, the Spelsau group, the no Spel sheep group, which is heritage breeds. And then you have others, which are sort of breeds that have come from elsewhere that have been imported into Norway. So within these three groups, I'm going to talk about the Norsk Kvitsau, the Norwegian white sheep group first. You will see this called an English Norwegian crossbred, but this is actually a group of different breeds of sheep. Some of the breeds that fall under this umbrella, and now I'm going to read so I don't get this wrong, are the Dalasau, Rigia, Steiger, Sheviet, and Texel. Um, many of the breeds that have been crossed are breeds you might recognize from the UK, um, such as Cheviot Leicester and Sutherland. 
many of these breeds were brought to Norway in the first half of the 19th century. Um, I haven't, I haven't found anything yet that says this is definitely a result of the fact that a lot of Norway's mill, you know, equipment and machinery, machinery that was brought into Norway came from the UK. So there's a long, um, shared history and tradition there, but I suspect that might have something to do with it because Norwegians and British, um, wool people were going back and forth. I think it's safe to say that most of the wool that you encounter as a hand knitter uh, in Norwegian yarns is going to be made from this Norwegian crossbred white sheep type. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One is that it's the most common type of sheep in Norway. So a vast majority of sheep um, in Norway fall under this category. Um, also, the fiber is white. So it's a, a really good starting point for a full range of colors if you're making a core you know, yarn for your company. So moving on to the second group, the spell sheep. Um, this is a heritage group. These are sheep breeds that are descended from the true old Norwegian sheep, which used to be wild once upon a time. These breeds tend to be a little bit smaller than the, um, the Norwegian crossbred types, the white sheep, um, which is part of why they have been less prioritized by farmers, um, because there's less wool and less meat. Um, but the breeds that fall under this umbrella are, there's three main breeds. So first of all, you have the Spalsau, which gives the group its name. Um, this is also called the, again, I don't want to get this wrong, the Old Norwegian Short Tail Land Race. <laughs> These sheep can be white or they can have naturally colored fleeces. Uh, so you get a variety of different colors with the spell. Next up is the Vilsau, which means wild sheep. This is also called the um, Gamalnosk sow, the old Norwegian sheep, because the name Vilsau is a bit of a misnomer because it is a domesticated breed. These uh, sheep almost went extinct in the middle of the 20th century. They were down to, I think, a few hundred maybe. Um, but thanks to efforts made by um, dedicated farmers, um, the Vilsau is uh, in a much better place today. There's over 40,000 sheep in Norway, I want to say. Um, the third type of spell sheep might be my favorite, the Pelsau, which means pelt sheep or fur sheep. Um, this is actually a relatively modern crossbreed, but it was um, created in the 20th century by crossing two heritage breeds. So it's a cross between the Norwegian Spelsau and a Swedish Gotland sheep. Um, and I will talk more about that one later when we get to yarns, because I do really love it. The direct line to truly old Norwegian sheep, um, is what ties these breeds together. So they have several shared characteristics, the most, uh, recognizable of which is the double coat. So, um, they have, uh, within their fleece, they have outer guard hairs and they have a softer wool undercoat. Um, and this is a trait you might recognize if you're familiar with Icelandic sheep and wool. Um, which is not a coincidence because the, you know, majority of settlers of Iceland were Norwegian and these sheep are directly related. So that's pretty cool. So moving on to yarn, because that's actually what us knitters interface with the most. Some of us interface with sheep, but most of us probably not. Um, I'm going to start with what you might call the big four of yarn brands in Norway, and that is Thala, of Norway, Sannes, um, Rauma, and Hillesvog. I'm going to focus the most on Rauma and Hillesvog because they put the most focus on Norwegian wool. Dolla and Sannes are bigger companies at this point, and um, on, well, for my interest, unfortunately, they focus a lot less on Norwegian wool coming from Norwegian sheep. So I'm going to put them aside for a moment, talk about the others. So Ralma, the Ralma wool factory, was established in 1927 um, in Møre og Romsdal on the west coast of Norway. Um, it's got an interesting story because the factory was bombed during World War II and they had to rebuild and they've shift, shifted buildings a couple of times as the mill has grown and all of that. Um, but their, their yarns are really fantastic yarns. I love Ralma. Um, I think most of their core line of yarns are the Norwegian crossbred type, the Norwegian white sheep type. Um, but they do have some, they have some yarns made from spe, uh, spelsau, spell sheep wool. They have a few different types, but primarily those are intended for, um, like weaving or embroidery actually, because Norway has a rich variety of handcraft traditions. 
um, and you want Norwegian wool for all of them. So uh, you can knit with the Ralmas Belsau yarns, there's no reason you couldn't, but primarily they're meant for weaving. Rama's core wool, what I think of as their core wool yarns are um, the Finol yarn, fine wool yarn, uh, which is a fingering weight woolen spun yarn, as well as their Treatrod Strike yarn, which is three ply knitting yarn, and that's more like a DK weight, but they're very similar. Come in a lot of colors, they're both woolen spun, they're both really excellent for color work. You also might encounter um, the lamb's wool yarn, Rövros Lamels yarn, or the old series yarn, the Tulutrolds Gamel Seria. Um, these are both pretty similar to Finul yarn, um, only the lamb's wool is slightly lighter, it's a, a finer yarn, so it's more like a light fingering, and the old series yarn is a higher twist than Finul yarn. The only one of these that I have to show you is Finul yarn. So I have some here. It comes in little skeins like this, which is great because you don't have to wind it. Um, this is a 50 gram ball or skein. Um, and it's just a beautiful yarn. I have a few things that I have knit in it. Um, I have a pair of mittens. These have been worn a lot, so I don't know how well they look on the screen. This is Finul Garn at a pretty dense gauge. This is a 2.25 millimeter needle, that's a US 1. Um, so the gauge is really, really dense here, um, which is perfect for mittens. I personally wouldn't want to go any finer than this, um, but it, it works really, really well. I wear these all the time in the cold in Montreal. I wore them in Norway. Um, they're fantastic. So Maybe I'll put both of them on to show you. So it's a Selbu style mitten with the Selbu style fun gusset, the different patterns on the back of the hand and the palm, and very traditional colors as well. I also have um, a vest. This is not Norwegian style. This is a, more like a Shetland style vest. This is Brunsfield by Solatig. But I knit this out of Rauma Finul Garn um, and I adore it. It was perfect for it. Um, so this yarn, this yarn makes a great substitute for um, fingering weight Shetland yarns as well. Um, and I steeked this, I cut it without reinforcements. You can just see the edges here. So this is a great yarn for steaking or that kind of thing as well. So moving on to Hillisborg. The Hillisborg wool factory was founded in 1898, also on the west coast of Norway. It's not that far from Bergen. Um, and much like Roma, their core line of wool yarns is made from um, the crossbred Norwegian white sheep type. Um, so I think of, what I think of as their two core wools are um, Hifa Ask and Hifa Embla. Osk is a, a two-ply sort of sport weight kind of uh, yarn that also comes in a, a range of beautiful colors. And then Embla is a three-ply, sort of more like a, a DK worsted. So in some ways, these kind of mirror the two core um, weights and yarns at Rauma. You can see Osk is kind of like Finul yarn and Embla is kind of like the Tretrods, the three-ply Streke yarn. Um, but the thing that I get really excited about with Hillesvog is their Persul yarns, their, their fur sheep yarns. Uh -huh. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk you through some of those. This is Tinde. Tinde was the first weight um, that they introduced. So it used to just be called Norsk Persul, Norwegian fur wool. Um, they now have uh, this fiber in different weights. So there's a fingering weight, which is Silja. Um, I have some here, hang on, here we go. <laughs> this is Silja. This is the fingering weight version. Um, it's really, really lovely. Uh, and then there is the bulky weight Bloma as well. So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna put this one down because it looks very close, but this one's actually been dyed. Um, these two, you can see, this is the natural undyed color of um, Pelsul, of the fur wool. So the, the dyed colors of this yarn have a really, really beautiful depth. 
can show you some of the colors here. So this is also Tinda. This is actually what I'm wearing. And you can see the new label there. But this is the color Le Gul. So like red, yellow. <laughs> um, and it's just because you have that gray base with the with it next to it, you can really see. And um, there's just so much variation and depth within the yarn. This is also um, one of the dyed colors. I knit a hat out of this, which you can see knit up here. I wear this hat all the time. This is the middle fork hat. It's a super simple ribbed hat, but this um, this yarn is just, it, it, it blooms in a really beautiful way. Um, so I have some of the, I've got a hat in the bulky weight as well. So this is also Bloma. And whenever I show this to people, it's got a halo to it. I don't know how much you can see it because I think the pink is blowing out a little bit, but it's got this, it's a sort of halo to it. It's a very, it's a very hairy yarn, um, but in a good way, if that makes any sense. So uh, it's extremely warm. This has been my go-to hat when we've had, you know, minus 28 Celsius temperatures in Montreal recently because it's just so warm. This one, by the way, is a Nora Gone pattern. Um, but yeah, so that's that's a couple of examples of um, what that yarn looks like knit up. I feel like showing you a few, I have some more colors of it and I feel like showing you a few more. A few more colors because it's so beautiful. Um, so here's an, a beautiful like burgundy red. And here's a really beautiful, you might call this a petrol blue. I think my favorite thing that I've knit out of a pedestal yarn though is probably this. Um, this was the first project that I made out of Blona, the bulky weight pedestal yarn. Um, and I thought right away, I think this would be a great substitute for Alafos Lopi, the bulky weight of the Icelandic yarn. So I decided um, last year to knit an Icelandic style yoke out of Blona. Um, and this is my dollar. I love this yoke. I love this sweater. Once again, I've been wearing this all the time while the weather's been cold in Montreal. Um, it's just... It's so lofty and warm and fantastic. Um, if you've been paying attention, you know that this gray color is the undyed color of the yarn, and yet I have a white in here. So this white is actually not Pelsul. It's um, a different Hillesvog yarn. This is a troll, um, and it is the Norwegian uh, white sheep crossbred type, uh, but it's the same weight as Blona. So I decided to combine the two to be able to get this yoke in these colors. Um, and with that in mind, because if you know my work, you know I love color work, um, Hilles Fog has introduced a couple of lines of yarns that can, that can be used together with Tinda um, and with Sulia, uh, which are a white lamb's wool. So that's really fantastic. If you wanna be able to do color work with these yarns, but you wanna have a white, now you have um, something that matches. I want to talk a little bit about smaller companies as well. Their yarns can be harder to get outside of Norway, but it's still worth covering them. Um, so one of those is um, the micro spinnery Selbu Spinnery, which is in Selbu um, near Trondheim. If you know of Ellie of Skander Knits, that's it's kind of the area where she's from as well. It's not too far. Um, and they focus on heritage breeds. Um, and all of that kind of stuff. So this is uh, this is what's left over from a project from one of their yarns, but this is a, a Vilsau yarn. Just to give you a sense of this, this is an undyed yarn. And the project that this is left over from is a hat. 
So I wanted to get a sense for this yarn, so I decided to knit up a simple hat by Hannah Fettig because it's a really great way to, I mean, it's like a big swatch that you can wear on your head, basically. It's just ribbing and stockinette. I mean, you can see this yarn. Can you see? I don't know. There's a little bit of a thick and thin quality. It's not completely uniform. Um, there's also some subtle variation in the color. Um, but this is another really warm one and it's really lovely and I would like to work more with this wool than I have so far. Uh, I have two more yarns from Selbu Spinneri. This one is a Spelsau yarn and you can kind of see the thing that I think of when I think of Spelsau yarn is that it's kind of wiry. Um, so it's sort of, let's see if I can pull a strand up here. It's, it's, it's a little stiff. Um, this again is an undyed yarn. Like I said, um, this is a sheep that can come in different colors. So there's some lighter wool in here. There's some darker wool in here and you overall get this really lovely kind of heathery gray effect. I'm still not sure what I'm going to do with this, but I just wanted to have some to be able to try. Uh, the third thing that I have from Selbu Spinneri is um, something really special. So this is a sheep that there are not that many more of. Um, it's the, the grey Trender sheep, which is specific to the region of where Selbu is. So this is actually, um, this skein is yarn from the grey Trender sheep blended together with um, Noschkvitzau. So blended together with white wool to be able to create this kind of in-between gray because the I think the gray the gray tender sheep is very dark I think the stitch definition on this one is going to be beautiful and I can't wait to try it out on something I just don't know what yet so that's that by no means covers everything that Selby Spinneri does but it's a little selection of the kinds of things that you're going to get there and how that's really different in a lot of ways from this, as much as I love this. Um, I also want to talk about Lofoten wool because they're from up north and I lived up north when I lived in Norway. Um, they are, as the name would suggest, located in Lofoten. Um, I believe that their yarns are spun by Helis Fog, I think. I'd have to double check. Um, but the wool is sourced in Lofoten as well. So um, it's Northern Norwegian wool that gets dyed naturally with plant dyes in Northern Norway, which is pretty special. Um, so what I have here is a little bit of leftover Lofoten wool. This is indigo dyed uh, Lofoten wool. The wool is from Rust, and I believe that the sheep out there are Norwegian white sheep crossbred type. Um, the other thing that you'll find with Lofoten wool, wool is um, sh wool from the sheep that are owned by the owner of the company who lives further inland in Lofoten. Um, Ranghild has um, the old Norwegian sheep, the wild sheep type. Uh, and I know I say wild sheep because I know that she doesn't like that name. So uh, she has Gammel uh that type of sheep. Uh, um, and they have yarns made from that wool as well. Another smaller company that I have written about on my blog is Telespin. Um, they're in Telemark and um, I don't have yarn to show you right now, but I do have another pair of mittens. This is actually a pair I designed. This is my Rosenhof mittens, which I originally designed for the Oslo Knitting Festival a couple of years ago for their magazine, although it's now an individual pattern. Um, Telespin's a little different than everything I've talked about because they um, they use mohair, so they have angora goats, and the yarns that they produce are a blend of mohair and wool. I know that their wool is from the Dalasau, so that's one of those Norwegian white crossbred types. Um, so it's like 80% mohair, 20% wool. Um, and these mittens have also been worn a lot. Let's see if we get some focus. So you can see... I mean, there's the, it's, it's not brushed mohair, so it, you don't automatically have the halo that you have if, if you're using like a silk mohair yarn. Um, but over time, as I've worn these mittens, they've started to develop, develop a little bit of uh, a halo. 
Uh, and this is a less traditional thing to use for color work. Um, Angora goats are not native to Norway. The goats that are there, you know, were brought into the country at different points in time. Um, but, uh, but I think it's a fun fiber to play with for color work and I did enjoy uh, making those mittens and I've enjoyed wearing those mittens, so it worked out pretty well. So all of this information might be interesting, but it's not very useful if you can't get your hands on the yarn to try it out for yourself. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about where you might be able to find Norwegian wool. In my experience, um, Salness and Dala are the most readily available uh, Norwegian yarns outside of Norway, but as I said, their focus is less on Norwegian wools. However, they both do have Norwegian wool yarns available. So if you're um, able to get Salness, Salness yarn, Salness yarn, look for Pergint, Tova, uh, Fritidsgarn, or Tikul. And if Dala is your only option, look for Dala Hilo. Um, as far, I mean, that's the only one that I know of that they label as being Norwegian wool. As far as the others, you can get Rauma outside of uh, Norway. The North American distributor is the Yarn Guys, and they have a um, find a retailer feature on their website, which I'll link to below. Yeah, I'm also gonna put a list on the screen right now of, um, Rauma's yarns that are made from Norwegian wool, so you know what to look for if you find someone who sells Rauma. Um, Finulgarn and Tretrots Strekigarn are the most common that I've seen in stores in the US, but your mileage may vary. Um, feel free to pause the screen here if you need more time with this list. If you happen to live in Europe, or if you live anywhere else in the world for that matter, Isolde's online store now carries several of Rauma's yarns, which is super exciting. Hillesvog is a little harder to find. I have seen some stores in the US that carry it online. Um, I know of another online retailer who should be carrying it soon, but I don't know if I can announce that yet. So I will link it below when that announcement has been made. Just look for it down there. Um, but if you can find uh, someone selling Hillesvog yarns, here is a list of Hillesvog yarns made from Norwegian wool. Um, these are the names you wanna look for. You. Uh, I just want to note, you might find Ask listed as Hifa 2, and you might find Emlot listed as Hifa 3. The last thing I want to talk about if you're interested in trying Norwegian wools is hand dyers. I want to make sure that you know that there are now hand dyers in Norway who are using these Norwegian wool yarns as their bases, which is really pretty exciting. So the first one of these that I learned about was Varbit in Oslo. I met Lila at the Oslo Knitting Festival about a year and a half ago, um, and I picked up this yarn here. This is a Spalsau yarn. Um, I believe that this is spun by Rauma, but I actually bought this one without a label, so I don't know 100%. Um, but it is a single ply. It is a, a single ply Spalsau yarn. I would say about like a DK weight. So I use that to make, this was actually my first simple hat by Hannah Fedic. Um, because I wanted to see how the yarn would knit up, but also how Lila's color that she dyed would knit up. Um, and I think this is really pretty. This is, I mean, this is part of where the hairiness of the pelsul comes from, to be honest. You can see that there's a lot of little hairs sticking out from this yarn. Um, and to be perfectly honest, I don't wear this hat that often because I do find those little hairs itchy, but it's a nice hat to have. Um, I also have a pencil yarn that Lila dyed. This is a uh, Hillesvog yarn that she's dyed this beautiful purple colorway. That's her label. Uh, Vadbit means weather bitten. Um, this is Hillesvog Sölje. It's the fingering weight pencil. So I think I also I've got this at the Oslo Knitting Festival, this Sylvia. So I think I'm going to use these two together because this is their reddish beige color. Um, so it's got these kind of pinky undertones and I think it looks really nice with the color that Lila dyed. Um, so she's one hand dyer. There's also Emilia of Arctic Yarns and the Arctic Knitting Podcast. I haven't tried uh, any of her colors before, um, but she's using Rauma and Hillesvog. Is she using Rauma? I know she's at least using Hillesvog and maybe Rauma as well. I'm not sure. Um, and I think there are a couple of other dyers out there now as well 
who are using these Norwegian wool yarns, but Valbit and Arctic yarns are the two that I'm the most familiar with. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this little introduction to Norwegian wool. Like I said, this is a really big topic to try and fit into one video, so there's probably going to be some follow-up videos um, after the fact. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, and uh, perhaps they might be the jumping off point for a new video. Um, otherwise, thank you so much for watching and uh, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.